Hello and welcome everyone. So the topic that I am taking in this uh, lecture is leukemia versus leukemoid reaction. Now this is an important topic for Viva as well as the theory. Leukemoid reaction is uh, given this name because is this uh, resembles the leukemia in the peripheral smear examination. So it uh, it mimics leukemia on the peripheral picture. So that's why it is called leukemoid reaction. And uh, it is commonly confused with the leukemia that is chronic myeloid leukemia. So let's discuss what are the various differences. So leukemoid reaction can be of two types. It can be myeloid or it can be lymphoid. So in leukemoid reaction, we get immature uh, myeloid precursors in the peripheral smear. And uh, the etiology in the leukemoid reaction is mainly uh, reactive. Most commonly, it is because of infections and intoxications. So, uh, and common causes can be non-hematological malignancies like lung cancer, where it is a part of uh, paraneoplastic syndrome due to release of certain cytokines. Then acute hemolysis can also cause sometimes the leukemoid reaction. So, these are the causes of uh, leukemoid reaction out of which the these two causes, infections and intoxication, these are the most important. And on the other hand, leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia, it is a uh, it, is, it has neoplastic etiology. So there is a translocation, reciprocal translocation between chromosome 9 and 22 results in tyrosine kinase formation and that causes proliferation of the immature myeloid precursors. So this is a neoplastic process and here there is a proliferation of the myeloid precursors which remain immature. There is lack of maturation while here they will be mature, uh, they will be presence of maturation of the myeloid precursors. Now clinically uh, in CML there is characteristic splenomegaly. So patient presents with abdominal heaviness or dragging pain in the uh, region of the spleen and uh, while in leukemoid reaction the clinical presentation will depend on the underlying cause. Uh, thirdly the percentage of immature cells. So when we count in the differential leukocyte count when we count in the peripheral smear usually the, in the leukemoid reaction, they are uh, about 5 to 15 percent. The myeloid precursors, that is like promyelocytes, myelocytes, metamyelocytes, band forms, these are usually 5 to 15 percent, while in leukemia, they are numerous, they are much more than this percent. So, in, whenever we find the immature uh, myeloid precursors in the peripheral smear, we call it left shift neutrophils. So, left shift is uh, more in leukemia than the leukemoid reaction. Next is total leukocyte count and total leukocyte count, normal total leukocyte count is between 4000 to 11000 per cubic mm. So uh, the WBC count if it is more than 11000 we call it leukocytosis but when these counts are much more high like uh, if it is up to 50000 or even more then we call it leukemoid reaction. And in leukemoid reaction, the counts generally they don't exceed 1 lakh. While in case of leukemia, the count will be in lakhs. So usually it is more than 1 lakh. Although in some cases we can even get count of less than 1 lakh. But more commonly, uh, in the more common scenarios, we get a TLC of more than 1 lakh. So generally we get the count in lakhs. Next, in the again in the peripheral smear examination, we find basophilia in case of chronic myeloid leukemia and again eosinophilia also we see in case of chronic myeloid leukemia. These are not seen in case of leukemoid reaction. So it is an important difference. Now in the CML, the, the myeloid precursors, they are immature while in leukemoid they are usually mature. So there is a score which is called neutro neutrophil alkaline phosphatase score. So these uh, this enzyme alkaline phosphatase, it is more seen in the mature uh, precursors of uh, of leukemoid reaction. So the NAP score is generally high in case of leukemoid reaction while since in CML the myeloid precursors they are not maturing. So the NAP score is low or it can even be uh, very low as low as 0 also. Yeah, it can be seen in CML. The normal range for the NAP score is 40 to 100. So again, this is an important difference between leukemoid reaction and CML. Next, uh, we focus on the 
morphology of the uh, white blood cells mainly the neutrophils so in the neutrophils we get the coarse azerophilic granules which are here known as the toxic granules so toxic granules it uh, is a very important finding in case of leukemoid reaction it is absent in case of cml uh, because the the precursors they are not maturing so toxic granules they are not seen in cml again dole bodies dole bodies they are uh, basically the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes uh, which is seen near the cytoplasmic um, membrane near the cell membrane so it is a purplish or bluish uh, small dot like uh, structure which is about 2 to 4 micron in size and it is seen in near the uh, cytoplasmic membrane more commonly and it is seen in leukemoid reaction while dole bodies are not seen in chronic myeloid leukemia next feature is cytoplasmic vacuolation so sometimes vacuole like spaces in the cytoplasm they are seen in case of leukemoid reaction and this feature is absent in cml so for wbc morphology you have to remember three things toxic granules dole bodies and cytoplasmic vacuolation which is seen in leukemoid reaction and absent in case of cml and a very very important uh, point in the etiology and uh, this feature which is the presence of philadelphia chromosome this is also uh, used for the diagnosis sometimes if there is diagnostic dilemma then philadelphia chromosome will solve this problem of the diagnosis of cml versus leukemoid reaction so uh, this is decisive in the in differentiating these two conditions uh, philadelphia chromosome is formed by the reciprocal translocation between chromosome 9 and 11 so the abl gene is present in chromosome 9 bcr is present on chromosome 22 when there is reciprocal translocation there will be pcr abl fusion and this uh, gene will uh, uh, lead to the formation of tyrosine product, tyrosine kinase as its gene product so this is known as philadelphia chromosome and uh, it can be detected by the molecular methods like the fish and it will help in the diagnosis of cml so it's the most important diagnostic test uh, which we can use to differentiate these two conditions and uh, lastly the other uh, important points between these two one is bone marrow examination so in bone marrow examination when we do after the peripheral smear we if we look at the bone marrow examination again myeloid precursors will be seen but they will have a orderly maturation in case of leukemoid reaction while the maturation is not orderly in case of chronic myeloid leukemia and additionally the eosinophilic and basophilic precursors will be increased and also blast so blast which are the most immature myeloid precursors so myeloblast they will be seen in cml and depending on the phase there is there are three phases of cml one is chronic then accelerated phase and blast crisis so in blast crisis like more than 20 percent uh, blast can be seen in case of uh, chronic phase it is less than five percent accelerated phase is between 10 to 19 percent according to the who criteria so blast uh, are a feature of cml while they were not seen in case of leukemoid reaction so these are the differences in the bone marrow examination and last point is the treatment so treatment will depend on the underlying cause as leukemoid reaction has various etiologies so depending on the etiology uh, we treat the condition while in cml cml is a neoplastic process and targeted therapy like imatinib is there then uh, chemotherapy will be given in case of cml so these are all the different differentiating points which we can use to differentiate between leukemoid reaction and cml and these two conditions they are important uh, differential diagnosis of each other in a peripheral smear examination so and um, if any doubts you can uh, put up your question in the comment section and these are my references thank you very much